This is coming to you from John Wayne's 26 Bar Ranch in Eager, Arizona. My name is William T. Brooks. I was born in Phoenix, Arizona in 1931. But most people just call me Chili Bill. They call me Chili Bill because back in the 1960s, I won the Universal Chili Society World Championship. Howdy partners, welcome to another edition of Chili Bill's Kitchen. Well today we're going to do one of the programs that we did oh, probably a year ago. And we've had so many requests for it that we've decided that we're going to uh, show you how to make uh, one of the traditional Mexican types of dinners in, uh, that's found south of the border. And we're going to find that we're going to be using black olives. We're going to be using what's called machaca. And we're going to be using what's called masa. Now these are the things that are used in this type of dish that we're going to do today. And uh, you probably have already guessed about what we're going to do. We're going to do good old Sonora hot tamales. And we have a guest with us and she makes her living making tamales. So this should be a good one. Don't go away. We'll be right back. Tell folks would try to gun him down, but the gun fighters always were prepared. They survived by their speed, killing first became their creed. The gun fighters told the folks to spare. and George Gabby Hayes Jr. We just took those falls for you a minute ago, telling you that no Hollywood magic is in this. Western know-how that makes Chili Bill's Chili, the authentic, bring you back to life, bowl of red, made with lean beef, and my own championship chili blend. A real palate pleaser. Why don't you give it a try? Well, let's see, I guess I better eat. Oh, there's only one bowl here? That's Chili Bill's Championship Chili. You'll find that recipe and many more in If You Like It Hot. Enchiladas, tacos, burros, barbecue. And if you can't find it at your local trading post, send for it. See? Well, we're back, and I have my guest with me here, Sylvia Marshall. She's been on, oh, about a year, I think. It was uh, when we last did the one on the tamales before. Uh, she owns the tamale factory in Old Cottonwood in northern Arizona and she makes her living making tamales so she must know something about it you know something about tamales oh a little bit <laughs> a little bit and okay. thanks a lot Bill for having me <laughs> well, here again well we got to get you a plug you know we got to get you a good a good cheap plug here what we're gonna do is we're gonna make good old Mexican hot tamales now I think you told me once that your mother was Mexican yes and your, your father was a gringo. Right. <laughs> <laughs> well, she ought to know something about uh, making uh, tamales. Why don't you give us a little bit of a rundown on what we're going to um, have to have to make up these tamales today. Uh, we've got about three, four things here. Why don't you just kind of tell me a little bit about it. Now, this is called a okay. machaca, right? Right. And you, why don't you tell us a little bit how you go about making your machaca up? Well, the first thing we have to do is boil our meat. And the best kind of meat to use is your roast. I mean just a regular uh, like a rump roast a or rump roast that type or of thing. Roast. Wouldn't you use kind of the cheaper cuts if yes, you get away with yes, it? Yes, because, because you're you, going to boil it anyhow. Right, you're mm. going to boil it and <clears throat> if you want to, I use nothing but strictly beef. Some people prefer beef and pork mix. 
You mean you don't go down to the store yeah. and get the hog's heads <laughs> like they do in Mexico? You actually make yours out of beef. Well, uh, I'm kind of a, a beef man myself because I have raised a lot of beef in my life. Uh, but I, I like the pork ones. They're all right too, but I, I like them mixed a little bit. Mm -hmm. I don't like a, a, a complete pork tamale. All right, go ahead with uh, how we're making this up now. All right, uh, we boil our meat How many first. pounds would we have here, Bob? Okay, um, I have of the a, meat. A, enough meat here. Uh, probably it comes to an estimated um, 10 pounds. You say this would about be about 10 pounds of roast someplace yes, in there? Yes. Okay. 10 pounds. And it's uh, boiled or pressure. You could pressure cooker it if you want with garlic. And okay, I put right, we'll get garlic. Garlic. Mm -hmm. What and else? Salt. Salt. Garlic salt. Do you use garlic salt yes, also? Uh -huh. You don't I use the raw garlic in it? I put a couple cloves. A couple cloves. Yes. Of course, you know, that we just leave that up to you. A lot of people like mm -hmm. a lot more garlic. I like more garlic yes. myself. Yes. So you really hit it. But when she's selling them down at the tamale factory, she has to be a little careful, you know, on how much of this type of stuff she puts in. Now, how are we getting our red color? Okay, Tell us that's, about our, that. that's our chili. All right, and now, that is, of course, made separate because your beef is cooked separate and you, everything is done separately. All right, so we all have a pot out. over here and we're, we're making up our uh, red chili sauce. Right. Now, do you right. grind your chilies from, from the chilies back here? Uh, I have in the past, but right now I've gotten a little more sophisticated. I see, I see, all right. Uh, so what are you using? Well, are you I using have someone that? else do it. <laughs> what? <laughs> well, what? What? <laughs> Like a big company. Actually, I buy frozen uh, uh, chili already uh, grind and everything. Well, it's very, very good. Let's say they used, um, I think my old grandma used to use uh, some of the commercial chilies on the market once in a while when yes. we made them up. I think mm -hmm. we used to use Las Palmas in the mm -hmm. old days, and she'd mix that with her own mm -hmm. ingredients. So you can use some of the commercial, good commercial chili oh, sauces. Oh, yes, yes. Okay, so and now... What else do we have in here? We have tomato sauce. Okay, now wait a minute, I almost forgot that. Mm -hmm. How much tomato sauce would we need for this batch here? We'll need about, um, oh, I put approximately, it's hard for me because I cook with You use the big, big stuff. Yeah, I know. So I'm trying to break this down. Well, you down. know, the little eight ounce ones are the no ones oh, I usually no. normally use at home. What would we use? We would, we would need a large, regular large can that you buy okay. in the market. All right, so that one would, of those. the big one, the big can probably would be around 20 ounces, Maybe. I think. Yeah. Yes, uh-huh. Yeah. And uh, then I, uh, what you buy is a frozen, in your frozen uh, Mexican part of the market, you can buy frozen chili. It's in a carton, and you would probably use about three of those. Now, if you wanted more to make it hotter, depending on your taste. Now, would you put that in a the blender then? No, that is already blended, oh, it's already, already blended. made <clears throat> for you. All right, so now do we have everything here now? We have to have our juice that we have cooked our meat ah, with. Okay, we almost forgot and that. And that's very the important. Meat, uh, the meat uh, broth, and she'll bring that up yes. so that it's got a, a good consistency yes. here like that. Now, do we have everything in it now? Yes. We'll try to run over it at the end of the program <laughs> again so okay. they can write it down. All Get right. your pencil and paper ready out there. All right, next thing, the masa. Tell me about the masa. Well, uh, the masa is, um, uh, I'm going to go back just a little bit about boiling the meat. You do that the very first thing so that you can save your juice because your juice is very important mm -hmm. and it's going to be used in your chili and in mixing your masa. Now, um, I have never used a powdered masa. I always use the fresh ground masa. And uh, you can buy it in your reg supermarket in the frozen department again. And it's regular you mean, you masa. Mean, yeah, you can buy the regular masa already made. And yes. it comes in a plastic uh, um, uh, container. Yes. <clears throat> and it's frozen. And uh, it's pretty good masa. I used it last yes, Christmas when we made our tamales. you still will have to mix it. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's called the raw masa. Yeah, you add, uh, you add your juices to it. Your and beef fact, juice, and you add a little bit of lard. You mm -hmm. have to have your lard to that hold it together. That has to be real lard, too. Yes, it has it to be, be real lard. It can't be cooking oil. It has no. to be lard. It has to be real lard. You have to add salt to taste, and you just mix. Okay, so now we have this made up here, and if you get the stuff that is, uh, you know, already made up for you, it's a lot easier, of course, but uh, what you have in here is corn. This is a corn flour that is ground, uh, and this, this flour, it was soaked in lye water, or not flour, the corn was soaked in lye water, and then they take the husks off of it, Clean. they grind it up, <clears throat> and then that's what becomes your masa, it, but it is corn. Yes. Okay, 
So now we have uh, good old black yeah. olives. Our now pitted gonna, black olives. You're just going to put those on the inside, they huh? Go, every tamale gets black olives. All right, tell me about these then. Okay, these are called corn husk or ojas. And, ojas. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and uh, the easiest way I find to do it in, in my shop is to clean them. You just start tearing them apart because the inside <clears throat> is going to have what they call a silk. And it's a stringy. And, uh, well, anybody that's been on a farm or been around <laughs> fresh corn knows the silk. Knows, knows the silk. Here it is, this See? part here. So you want to clean so that up. So we just want to clean it. Of course, you'll have a <clears throat> trash can in front of you. you we hope so. <laughs> and after you get them kind of, you know, spread apart and cleaned, then you put them in nice warm water and so that they're nice and soft. Yeah, see, these are very hard when they're mm -hmm. dried like this. So she has to soak them in the water so that uh, they are malleable, so that mm -hmm. you can wrap the tamales. Right, right. Okay, and now I think we've just about got everything here. We've got, and this is all we're going to need to put it together, right? Right. Okay, well, why don't we just get uh, started here on putting a couple of them together, and then you're going to have to show us how to stack them into the, to the, um, steamer okay and uh, all of that so what we'll do is we'll get you a little working area right, right. here now <clears throat> and if we've got time today we're going to do a couple recipes you put that where you need it sure and then we'll i think we've got enough time here probably to make maybe one or two and now she does this all the time for a, li a living because hers are all hand wrapped she doesn't fool around with machines these are all hand wrapped. Now, did you have? Didn't you have a spatula or something? No, you're just going to no, use I that. No, I use huh? a spoon. Okay. It seems to work the easiest. <clears throat> now, I... there are several ways of wrapping them. Yes. I know that uh, this is the way I like to wrap them. The way you mm -hmm. do them. My wife, she uses them with on both ends. Right. Right. So that's, why don't you do one common. of each if you can like that? Okay. If you can just kind of give them an idea why they're doing them that way. Now I like them this way because they always tell you to cook them uh -huh. in an upright position. Right. Okay, go ahead. Uh, this is important on these corn husks or old <coughs> husks. Uh, you have to have the smooth side to spread your masa. You'll have two sides, a rough side and a smooth. So we have to have the smooth side so that the masa won't stick and when you unroll the tamale, it just rolls out and you won't have to. Okay, you've got about enough time here before the break where you All can right. make one of them. Now, so you have about, oh, a big husky tablespoon, huh? Yes. Now, some people prefer real thick, thick masa. This is a medium. All right. And I will... Uh, and she's getting this all over the whole thing. You know, sometimes it'll lap over a little bit, but well, she's getting in, it all just over. Just in, uh, up to here. Okay. This is all you I'd need. say that looks like about uh, a little over half. Right. And then we'll take a scoop. All right. You've got a scoop of the... Um, of the machaca. That's about the, this. Okay. About this amount. Right. And you take your little black olive. One little black right olive there, there. And we're going to roll. Now you're just going to lap that over and right. then roll it. And we're going to roll them. I see. And then we're going to take this. What do you do? Just pop just your finger put there? Just your finger there. And okay. hold it up. That's good. And there it is. And there it is. There's a tamale for you. And this is a real homemade tamales. We're going to take a, a break. We'll be back in about a minute here. And we're going to How about cooking up some of those great foods of the Southwest like stuffed peppers, cowboy food, and something from the Orient, and stuffed bell peppers. Get your copy of If You Like It Hot Now and start cooking up all those great foods of the Southwest. As you can see here, Sylvia's uh, getting ready to make us another one right here. She's put the masa onto the corn husk. Now she's going to put the meat in. Now remember how she did the meat. She put it just slightly to one side, not in the middle. Okay, go ahead. You just keep going. And she takes the first tuck in it, brings it, laps this over, puts her finger down, and this side in a minute we're going to show you will be facing up. Okay? Now, can you make us a double this time? Try to, try to make the one where, where it's on both ends. We do have people that have written in and said, well, I don't make them that way. I make them oh, with them. Okay. You know what I mean? Yes. See if you can. Or this is one you're going to piece together okay. here this, too, aren't you? This is... <coughs> 
Now, I am not an expert on this. I, it's so much easier for me to do the other way because I make such a large quantity of them. Yeah. And so I can't be piecing them like mm -hmm. this. This is mm -hmm. ti very time consuming. Yeah, well, it's very time consuming. Very. Oh, you, you betcha. You piece them like this. <clears throat> a lot of people that make green corn tamales like to do them this way. Yes. Now, there may be a reason why they do them. I'm not sure. But there's uh, some of the people that make the green corn tamales do them this way. Now, what you have, now you're going to see in just a second, she's going to bring uh, the meat over into the one. Now, this is going to be probably a little sloppier than a normal one because uh, she doesn't do this one all the time, see? Yeah. Now, she's going to take and she's going to wrap it from there, and you're going to have the double batch of masa on the inside of your tamale. All right? Now, but, I hope we didn't confuse you too no, much. I hope not either. But this is time-consuming. <laughs> yeah, it is. It, but, uh, uh, well, it takes twice as much time to do it. That's right. And uh, so you can do almost the same thing by putting a little bit more masa uh, in your first husk. Right. All right. Now I want to show, uh, show them how to You're piece You're going to make us one more now? How to piece oh, together. Okay. Because uh, these corn husks, a lot of them you get, are little pieces. So I'm going to tear this because... I don't have any more. Yeah, see, the, horn, the corn husks uh, sometimes will come and they'll only be this wide. Yes. So you can make a tamale out of them. So way. you just lap this over here like so. <clears throat> there we go. And we'll get our masa. Kind of keep it together. The masa will help well, that to seals keep it that. together. And right. I've, I've seen people actually put a little bit underneath it uh -huh. there and to seal it, to seal it on. And then, so now what you have is two scrap pieces. Right. And, and they, they're just like one big one, like right. the one I was using. Okay. Don't forget the olive. <laughs> and the olive, right. You've got to have that old olive. Now, if you were making the green corn, or the um, uh, green chili uh, tamales, you'd be making them the same way, right? Yes, exactly no the same way. All right. <clears throat> now, what we're going to do now, you've made up about four here, and we'll show them how to put them into the cooking pot. Now, what we have here tamales. Mm -hmm. We're going to have these in just a few minutes. Now she has probably what? A dozen or two in there? Uh, three dozen. Yeah, three dozen in yes. there. Now you told us how much would this make up this now? This will make up between four and five dozen tamales. Yeah, n normally what we do, uh, we make them up and we freeze them. Uh, yes. You know, like if you're making them up for Christmas or something like that. So this looks like an awful lot, but if you're at home, we always make kind of a production line. Right. One guy's doing the, the uh, masa, the next guy is doing the the machaca and the uh, olive and then the roller and then into the pot. Now that's the old Mexican way of doing it on the mass production line. We're going to be eating these here in a little bit, but right now we're, she's going to show you how to put them in here. I'm going to hold this up All right. and you tell us why you have to do it this way. Now here's what we have. We have about, what, an inch of water in the bottom, half yes, inch of water? Uh, <clears throat> depending on your size of pot. Yeah, and then she's put in the dried corn husks like this off the bottom. Now this keeps them out of the water. See, now I cheat at home because I have a steamer. Oh yes. Oh, I've got a, I've got a regular tamale steamer that's and that's, uh, it's go. the old porcelain one, right. you know, and you got the insert that goes right. in, holds it off the bottom, you know, about this far. And, uh, but this is the old Mexican way of doing it. They didn't have that fancy stuff. No, now this didn't. keeps it from burning, right? Right. right. Okay. Of course you can add more corn husk yeah. if you wish, depending on then you take your tamale. All right, let me, let me just lean this up okay. like this so they can see. And it has to set. That's good. Straight up. That's fine. They have to be straight up and down. Yes. Like this. And you just go around in a circle and fill them. All the way around. Fill them all the way in. And then when that is completed, you take some more corn husk and you cover. You will cover all the tamales. And then you put a lid on it or aluminum foil tight so your steam stays in your pot. Yeah, now you have aluminum yes, foil here. I do on that one. <clears throat> now on mine, I just have a regular lid. If it's tight. But this goes on over the yes. tamales. Uh -huh. Now, what we forgot to do last time, Sylvia, yes. is tell them how long to cook oh, it. Oh, yes. Okay? All Make right. sure you tell us how long to cook these things. These should take about two hours. Two hours? Two hours. Another little hint, and I forgot this morning, but is if you have a penny, put a penny in the bottom oh, yeah. of your pan so when it starts boiling, you will hear that penny. Now, you just want to get it at a certain uh, clicking sound. You don't want it to uh, boil because your corn husk will burn. You'll lose your water. 
Yeah, so, if, when you hear the penny quit clicking, uh -huh. you better get more water into yes. this or you're going to have burn tamales. But the penny just sits there and goes like this. Mm -hmm. Just bring it to, to a boil and you'll hear that penny snapping and then you turn it down and then you'll hear it just kind of like a cricket sound. Just clicking along uh -huh. in there, right. Yes. All right, now here's what we have. <clears throat> We've got them, like she said, she's going to put them all the way around like this. We're going to fill up the middle too after right. you just keep working them around in there. Probably in this one we could put what, a couple dozen maybe? Probably a dozen and a half. She's going to cover them with more hust and then we're going to put the cover on. If you don't have a cover then you can use the aluminum foil. Yes. Okay. Now, so why don't we just go ahead and you've got a couple more here. You can stack those on in here real quick. And uh, we already have naturally, as we do on Chili Bill's Kitchen, we have cheated because <laughs> these are done. I hope, and these are yes. done, I hope. <laughs> and we're going to be eating these over here. But these <clears throat> would take us two hours to cook. And you know, I used to have the biggest problem on get and telling when the darn things were done. Mm -hmm. You can check them by opening them slightly up, take it and feel the masa. And if the masa has gotten fairly firm, then they're pretty close to being done, right? Well, uh, if you keep your steam in, the, you can just open it up and look at it and your masa here will be kind of flaked like and you can coming tell apart. whether it's coming apart and you yeah. can tell that they're almost done it's starting to release itself uh -huh. from the husk right and they're almost done at that time yes okay now we've got one more thing we have to do today you know uh, yeah. uh you told me we were going to make up some salsa to go on these things why don't you go ahead let me get this out of the way clean right. this up just i'll clean this up a little bit okay. why don't you get your stuff okay and that we're going to need for the salsa to go on the top of these good old homemade tamales now, we might as well move this stuff out of the oh, way sure. over here. Why don't you just pull that on over there, give All us some right. more working room. Now we'll be making some more up a little bit later, but right now we're just going to make up the, uh, the salsa that we're going to uh, use. Uh, it's, it's kind of a, uh, not a dip, but it, you kind of cover the tamale. When you yes. open it up, you put yes. it on your plate, you kind of cover it. And some people even like to um, do them enchilada style. I, oh, yes. I love that. Yes, that's... And then put the cheese on, put them in the oven, so forth. But we're just going to use this this is the way the Mexicans would do it, uh, and they use a, a salsa, or is that what you call it, a salsa? Yes, just All right. a salsa. Why don't you go ahead and start that real quick here. We've All got right. just about enough time for you to make up a short batch of this. We're going to call it One Minute Salsa. Go. <laughs> All right, I have whole tomatoes that I had put through the blender or la machine. All now right. You do not add water. Okay. And we're going to add some onion. All right. Diced, very finely. Okay. And then, of course, I have my garlic. We haven't diced those yet? Oh, no, my goodness, we we're not going to make it all the way here. Let me get those back here real quick. Keep okay. going. Okay. All right. And we have our cilantro. This is a very important spice. All right. Now, you've heard me mention the cilantro before, so you know what we're talking about. And now, we will shred some in there. But this is the cilantro leaves yes, here. Now, what else do we fresh. have to put in there real quick? Okay. And we're going to put in lemon. We're going to put lemon in... Lemon juice. A lemon juice. Yes. Okay. We'll put in a lemon juice. All right. And, of course, we cannot forget our fresh jalapenos. Dice. Oh, got to have that. We're going to let it age a little bit. We're going to be back in about 30 seconds. We're going to eat some of this. Caramba, somebody stole my caballo. Nobody stole your caballo, Tomato. He took off and became a lawyer after tasting Chili Bill's famous championship chili. Couldn't I know you from some place? I'm Chili Bill, and we're doing a Man on the Range interview to find out how many of you good folks out there like your chili hot and spicy. That's the way I like mine. Plenty of hot stuff in it to keep my mustachio curled. Here, Tomato. Try some of this and become a lawyer, too. Smells like chili. Hey, you're getting smarter already, Tomato. Good chili. Of course it's good. It's Chili Bill's Chili. And those of you who like it hot and spicy can enjoy all those good recipes you've seen Chili Bill and his guests cook on Chili Bill's Kitchen Show by going to your local trading post or bookstore and picking up a copy of his famous recipe book, If You Like It Hot. See? Or you can order it direct by sending your money over. Oh boy, looks like they're just about done over here. And uh, uh, Sylvia's doing the uh, 
the rest of the uh, salts, uh, salsa. salsa here. Yes. And did we get all of this in or not? Well, uh, no, that was just a little bit too much garlic. Boy, but uh, this salsa, uh, you make it according to taste. Now, you, with your lemon, your cilantro, your garlic, uh, you use your whole tomatoes, your canned tomatoes, and you make as much as you want according to taste. And you use your fresh jalapenos. So therefore, I can't tell you to make a great big batch or a small batch. All right, your jalapenos is what's going to make it hot, right? Yes. <clears throat> so you have throughout. to be a little careful on it. Or that. you can use uh, crushed peppers. Okay, here we go. Peppers. We're going to have to get to eating, and we're going to oh, get yes. left out here. Better grab one of those for me there. All right. Real quick. Let's see. We'll get one right out of the center. There here. we go. Oh, we you got one. it? Well, I made two kinds today. All right, just grab one. I made red chili and green chili. Okay, that's good. Now let me get in here and unwind okay. this. Where's the salsa here? Ooh, do I eat this too? Oh no! Oh, you that don't eat that too. No, no. I'm gonna put some salsa on mine here, and we're gonna take a bite of this. Sure looks great. We gotta cut and go, so we'll see you later. Goodbye. This was brought to you from John Wayne's 26 Bar Ranch in Eager, Arizona.